So on today's episode, we're talking roof pitch. Let's get to it. So we're currently in our modern row home and we are not talking tone and pitch as if we were singing. We're talking about the roof pitch, what goes into it, how important it is to be able to get the right pitch for your design aesthetic. And then obviously the second item would be able to ensure that all water that hits the roof allows it to be able to travel down and out to your grading and drainage below. So on this house, we have actually four pitches that we're gonna to discuss today. The first is gonna be our steep gabled pitch that we have here, which is gonna be a 10-12 pitch. We also have a 6-12 pitch, a half an inch 12 pitch, and a 3 8 inch 12 pitch. So before we jump into the aesthetics of these pitches, let's define what exactly these numbers mean. So in this case, in our primary bedroom area, as well as other gables in the home, we have a 10-12 pitch. So what this means is that every foot that we come down the roof line, we've dropped 10 inches. And in this case, we have about 14 foot area for our primary bedroom. So we're about seven feet to the ridge. So we have about a 70 inch drop or a, almost six feet from ridge to top plate. One of the nice things is that we are able to do a parallel cord truss in this detail that allows us to be able to have a two foot area to be able to get all of our systems in place, including our HVAC, our electrical, and any ceiling details that we might have, as well as our insulation. And it also allows us to be able to match the exterior pitch at a 10-12 pitch inside as well as out. It works great for this more loft style row home because it allows us to be able to get tall ceilings inside. And because of the structure, we have smaller gables to work with. And so we wanna make sure that it's not squatty, but that it actually looks proportionate to the two-story home that we were developing here. Overall, this gives us a great volume for our interior space at about 15, 15 and a half feet high for our main primary bedroom. In addition to that, because of the modern row home that we've designed, it's a taller structure, especially with the portion that's two stories. And so we have to go with a steeper pitch or else it would look really squatty and really not help with the architectural significance of the design in which we are trying to encapsulate within this build. So our second pitch, that was designed for our gables was actually a 612 pitch. Now this spans a much larger portion of the house. This is a third bedroom and bathroom combo. So we're probably about 20 or so feet across this gable. So it is a little bit squattier. However, we're currently on the side setback and for the aesthetic, we had to go with a lower pitch to be able to capture our ridge line into our 1012 pitch on the main gable that resides on the west side of the home. So let's go take a peek at what I'm talking about. So once again, we have our main design aesthetic at our 10-12 pitch, and this roof line runs from the front two bedrooms, both downstairs and upstairs, all the way through to our third bedroom that's located in the rear of the house. It creates symmetry with the house and still provides that height that's necessary, especially on the front gable, to be able to make sure that it proportionally looks correct for the design intent. However, we had to go with the 6-12 pitch because we wanted that ridge line to be able to die and create a clean, modern look with this specific roof line. And from a construction detail, it wouldn't have been a big deal, but from an aesthetic with the modern design that we were trying to accomplish, it helped to capture that gable, make it clean transition. And also from a warranty perspective, we don't have additional flashing that's necessary for a small pop-out that would give it more of a craftsman feel versus the modern row home that we've currently designed. So something that might seem a little counterintuitive is that for the design aesthetic, we went with a 10-12 pitch on some of our main, some of our main roofing details at our gable locations. However, to be able to split the house up, we also opted for some flat, some flat roof details. Now, obviously we can't do a completely flat roof or else we'd have major leaking issues and essentially create a large swimming pool on top of the roof. And from a code perspective, minimum drop we have is a quarter inch for every 12 inches. Now, I don't usually like to deal with the minimums, so we were able to incorporate a 3 8 inch drop, which allows us to be a little bit more aggressive and ensure that water is gonna flow appropriately off of this parapet that we're currently standing on. The nice thing about this specific roof is that we didn't have to do a lot of crickets because we pitched from our high point here in the corner and we sloped directly down to our drain and scupper discussion that's coming off of our side yard detail that will allow for appropriate drainage within this parapet roof. So the second area that we have a 3 8 12 pitch roof is going to be above our living room and our patio detail that really helps to frame out and create that modern detail. Very linear, clean lined overall. And we had to do this on a hip basis so that we had a clean reveal 
that was level around the exterior of the property. And so we have a small hip that comes over here that's overframed that allows us to be able to shed water onto our parapet. Then additionally on to our patio roof, which will drain off the edge of the roof, utilizing our drip edge and falling to the landscape below. So why exactly did we do, so why do we, why exactly do we opt for a flat roof detail in this area? Originally in the design intent, we wanted to go with a 10, 12 pitch and create another gable structure. However, from a functional perspective, we have a laundry room for all of our upstairs bedrooms that is located right here. And we wanted to ensure that we got a nice size picture window to be able to allow natural light throughout the house. So we opted to go with a 12 foot top plate for our main living situation that's residing right underneath my feet with a coffered ceiling detail. So it allows to still make a statement piece even though we don't have that steep cathedralized vault inside this specific location. So just to recap, we have our parapet, which essentially we have either a cricket or a 3 8 drop to our scupper. And then we have our additional 3 8 12 drop that has a hip detail that allows us to be able to shed off water in three zones, one towards this parapet, the other one towards that parapet, and this off the main portion of the living room onto our patio detail, which then will eventually flow off that roof and onto the landscape and the gradient drainage plan below. So we have one more pitch that we need to cover on this house. So let's head to the front of the property. So our last pitch location I wanna talk about is the flat roof detail that we have associated over our outdoor terrace and our upstairs family room. We opted to go with a half an inch by 12 pitch on this area because there's a lot of watershed. And once again, we wanna make sure that all that water sheds appropriately. Now we wanted to keep an even reveal around our drip edge detail. So as you can see, we'll have an even flush reveal that runs around the perimeter of this home all the way over to this location and then back in to one of our other gables that we just talked about. And in this location, we have a small ridge that runs back to where our valley terminates into this half 12 pitch. This ensures that not only we get the design aesthetic that we want with a clean linear look that allows us to be able to call this a modern row home and still getting the drainage that's absolutely necessary to be able to shed off a majority of the water that will come during monsoon season and during the winter storms that we have ever so frequently here in Phoenix. So I know we already covered this, but ultimately our 1012 pitch really was dictated on this front gable. We have a two story gable that resides on our first floor, spans our 30 inch truss space, as well as our upstairs bedroom. And really this is the gable that makes the front elevation come together within this home. Ultimately, due to the height, we needed to go with a tall pitch so that it looked proportional in design and allowed us to be able to get a cathedralized ceiling in this upstairs bedroom as well. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode where we've discussed all the pitch details on our modern row home. If you have any questions about pitches or design aesthetics associated with those details, go ahead, hit us a DM below. And as always, have a great day.